Welcome back to the King Win for Charity Easter Edition 2015. That's day two. We have one more quarterfinal left. TJ, it's been a marathon. Seven games done. Uh, seven matches done. We've seen a whole lot more games than seven games. I think we must have seen something like 28, 29 Hearthstone games, 27, something like that. Eight hours in. Eight hours in. Possibly another hour, hour and a half to go, but it's a big one. It's a big one. We have Tice versus Forsen. Forsen boys, get it. Every Forsen boy, get in here because we know he has the Grim Patron Warrior, so that's going to be fun. And not only Grim Patron Warrior, but his own take on the Grim Patron Warrior, um, which has piloted shredders. It has uh, commanding shout. We saw the commanding shout was what won him the game earlier. Commanding shout with Warsaw Commander Grim Patron on the board. It's basically as many Grim Patrons as you can fit on the board, which usually with Warsaw Commander is six. And uh, just overwhelming amounts of board control. <laughs> Follow that up with a battle rage on six low health Grim Patrons. And all of a sudden, you found yourself winning a game. And we'll have to see how, what kind of success Forsen is going to meet in this next matchup against Tice. Uh, he hasn't met much in the past. You, you said earlier, Tice has a 4-0 a record in this head-to-head -head matchup against Forsen in the past. Exactly. Uh, Forsen has actually a very unfavorable game record as well. Let me just uh, see what that was here. I think it's, uh, yeah... A four, a three, two, a three, one, a four, zero, oh, and a one, zero, in uh, in those matchups. So that's that's really interesting. It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, the Tice is going to start with his warlock, and Forsen is going to start with that Grim Patron Warrior again. Forsen does have the Mech Shaman as well, uh, and then the Freeze Mage. Now, like we said earlier, Tides of Time with that uh, that Mildred to target Freeze Mage potentially. Um, I will speak to Tides of Time and find out if that is the ex exactly the strategy is to target Freeze Mage. If it is, he's really going to be hoping that <laughs> the Forsen comes out on top here because Tice, the w he will play the winner of this match uh, tomorrow in our second semi final. And Tice does not run it. And in fact, um, is Tice running Mech Mage? I think he might be. I'm trying to remember if it was Mech Mage or Freeze Mage. I think, I think it was Mech Mage. I thought it was Freeze Mage, but I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Um, so for the first matchup, yeah, like you said, Ty's going to be playing the Warlock. Uh, Forsen will be playing Warrior. Uh, staying unpredictable is a big thing. Last time Forsen sort of ended the, the matchup with his Warrior. Um, this time around, he's starting it off. And this is the Zulok from Tice. Uh, so there is a potential for really big combo plays as a, as a Warrior in this matchup against Zoo. Um, the biggest thing here for the Warriors is to make sure they have weapons early on, especially the fireworks and their opening hand, to be able to deal with the, the, the first wave of creatures from the Zulok. If they can do that, then uh, the possibilities are endless. Yeah, it's it, it, we could see some absolutely crazy Warrior plays. We've, we've seen some insane games today. I can't believe it. Like The Grim Patron Warrior combinations, the, uh, the, what, the, the Mill Druid against the Freeze Mage, it's just some of the craziest stuff I've ever seen in competitive Hearthstone. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it, CJ. I've never seen anything like it. That's pretty cool, though. Uh, that the, it's so so diverse of a field that the meta right now has been so predictable that players can bring decks like Mildruid and have success with them just because they're targeting certain decks. And that's one of the reasons why Conquest is such a cool, a, a cool format. We saw Chalky... <laughs> Uh, do this exact same thing with Fatigue Mage earlier on in, at the very beginning of Conquest where he just brought like he brought three Fatigue decks yeah three Fatigue decks uh, just because he knew that th that's how the meta was going he knew that he would be able to find wins with all that it was um, basically targeting out all control all control because the meta was so control heavy at the beginning and now Tides knows that as long as he brings two solid decks and then Mildruid, eventually his opponent is going to have to take a win with the, the Freeze Mage, which a lot of people save for last. So it's targeting directly at it, which I think is just... We still don't know for sure, but it seems like that's one of the stronger decks of the two. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it is it's pretty crazy to see how this is turning out, but uh, Tides, if that is the strategy, it's very, very smart. We'll see how it goes here. But yeah, I, I don't know why I didn't think that Tides had played Mage, but Tides is playing Mage. Um, I'm going crazy after seven games and eight hours here, TJ. I'm forgetting everything we've seen. Yeah. I think it was Freeze Mage. I don't know. Maybe it was. Yeah, who who even knows at this point? 
We'll see. I need a we'll nap. I need a nap we're... so I can sleep and dream about the Backstreet Boys documentary that I had last night. Me and Crip and Raynad and Lothar just, you know, having a grand old time being a fictional boy band. Can't wait. Does sound like a pretty good time. But what we're going to see first is we're going to see the uh, zoo from Tice. And he gets a pretty good start with the flame imp, gets some two drops as well. So, but an early unstable goes. I, that's actually pretty good for this. Uh, it's going to trade with the, the flame imp pretty well. That's going to stop that in his tracks. And then possibly just see a haunted creeper here or maybe a knife juggler. There is a second flame imp potentially as well. So he could go knife juggler flame imp. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Both plays so, are actually pretty strong against uh, Fire War Axe. Haunted Creeper, of course, is resilient to Fire War Axe anyway. And uh, Knife Juggler, <clears throat> if he plays Fire War Axe this turn, he's basically saying that, well, no matter what, I'm taking six damage over the next two turns, possibly even more. For Othin Berserker, though, if there's no buffs here, it does trade two for one, which is actually pretty crazy. Yeah. That is pretty crazy. There's nothing that Tice can do unless he taps into an abusive sergeant. I don't think he even needs to tap, but uh, he can't. Go the the, oh, there, oh we go. there you go. Yeah. Got the 50 50. Yeah, juggles could have been bad there. And he does have a couple ways to activate this egg as well. Forsen could end up being in a lot of trouble. He didn't have the fireworks early on. Now he's forced to. He, he's really on the ropes. It's. You can actually play Dread Corsair here if you want to do as well. Yeah, you can play the Death Spike and then play the Dread Corsair, which is that's a pretty strong play. Yeah, this Dread Corsair, I actually, I truly, really like Dread Corsair, and uh, maybe because early, early on in Hearthstone when I first got into Hearthstone, I found a little bit of a very, very minor Hearthstone YouTube fame for playing a pirate deck. I think I was one of the first people to do it. So if you go, if you YouTube search Hearthstone Pirates. I think my video is like fourth down. It's got like 20,000 views or something. So I'm always very partial to the pirates. Half those you videos are adult films, so be careful. <laughs> what, my videos or the videos you find when you search? No, the videos you find when you search. Um, the opt to save the Dread Corsair, which is interesting. I guess he thinks it can uh, protect a Warsong commander, protect... Grim Patron, protect a Frothing Berserker. It's pretty useful, pretty flexible, particularly when you have a weapon up. I, I think he just doesn't want to... He doesn't want to give this egg anything to hit up against, I suppose. There's so many activators that don't require that, though. You could Power Overwhelming, <clears throat> Void Terror as well. You can actually Void Terror the following turn, which would make a really big board with... Um, with the Nerubians plus the buffed up Void Terror. There's Commanding Shout, which was the MVP of the game that Forsen won in his quarterfinal series. Or sorry, that, in his round of 16 series. That badass Commanding Shout. <laughs> yeah, it, it really did wonders for him. Yeah, you can try and draw here, but I don't know if that's going to be the play. He could be in trouble here with the uh, Void Terror. <laughs> he could draw twice, actually. Yeah. Warsong Commander and then Acolyte of Pain, charge it in and then draw again when you when you swing. Mm. Yeah, it's it's so hard to know with this deck what you want to do in this er these early setup turns because obviously you're trying to build up your combo pieces, but you're also trying to you're trying to not die. I mean, it's an aggro deck. I think not dying is the more important the more yeah. important situation here. Absolutely, you have to play, but you have to play to not die and you have to play to win at the same time. So you don't want to use up too many useful cards. It's really interesting he's holding on to this Dread Corsair um, over the Unstable Go. Dread Corsair is, is like an extra free three or four, four, three damage of burst later on, potentially, when you have Warsong Commander out. So unless he absolutely has to, I think he's that's why he's hesitating to throw it out there. Well, he's going to... Yeah, he's, he's not going to use the Void Terror here. He's just going to... Pop that unstable goal. It's an execute coming in, but that's not particularly useful at this point. Well, it might be. He can trade in his Acolyte of Pain to draw a card into the egg. Throw his Death Bite into the spider. That'll clear off the 1-1s, and then he can execute one of the Nerubians. 
That's about the best he's ever going to be able to deal with the number of beans. But uh, draw first. Thorson's pretty good. Pretty good. Can't really pass up an opportunity to play. Yes, no. And now he's going to protect it with the Dread Corsair. See, this I like keep holding on to it. That's actually a really smart play because there's no reason to throw it out there in the turns before. The only thing it's doing is um, giving the egg something to bounce off of with like an abusive sergeant. He, there was n there was nothing on the board that was threatening him, and there was nothing on the board that he needed to protect. So there's no point in in throwing out your dread corsair just all willy nilly like that preemptively. Uh, this is a better choice because he, he's actually protecting something on his board. Yeah, exactly. He's going to use it to protect the Thorison. Tice can get through it here and... Yeah, he doesn't... He actually does have the damage to kill Thorison here. So he may opt to do that. You can put the Deferred Argus right in the middle. Trade the uh, other Argus into the Dread Corsair and then the Nerubian into the 5-5. Five, five. The thing he has to make sure that he does, though, is also play around the Death Spire for the following turn. So um, he wants to make his board as resilient as possible to the residual AoE of the <clears throat> of the Death Bite, while also yeah. clearing off both of these targets. So I think this is sort of the best of both worlds, because if he Death Bite into the Haunted Creeper, he's still going to be left with a Haunted Creeper, and he's going to get a 4-4 Nerubian egg. So he's immune to all sorts of 4-1s and AoEs by doing it with this method yeah exactly if he draws a grim patron here <laughs> uh, he doesn't have enough to, to actually use commanding shout so uh, not quite as good but he can no he could start throwing in grim patrons left and right if uh, he did draw into it with this with this accolade of pain he's looking at commanding shout this turn this will essentially give him three draws because he draws from the commanding shout, he'll draw from the Acolyte of Pain, and then he'll keep the Acolyte of Pain alive to, in order to preserve one other draw. So, uh, I really don't mind that play at all. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's pretty good use of commanding shout, actually, to get those draws. Gonna see the Dread Corsair come down. Hmm... And since he has commanding shot now, he can actually death by it and keep his creatures safe. Yeah, that's true. So if he executes the egg here, throws his death by in, he clears the board with the exception of the defender of Argus. But it looks like he's not going to choose to do that. Really smart play, though. Yeah, it's it's pretty clear he's been playing a lot with this deck, and he, you know, as you say, it's a kind of a custom Grim Patron Warrior. It's a little bit different from all the others, and uh, it's clear he knows this deck really, really well. You know, a lot of a lot of people criticize Forsen and say he's not a high level player, but he's clearly worked with this deck to a pretty high level to where he's really, really making Ty's think about these turns, and this is a really tough matchup in what is a really for what is a really strong deck. So Forsen's doing very well here, and even if Tice wins this match, he knows he's going to have to come up against it again. I think getting the the win out of the way with the zoo though is pretty good that's yeah, why people pretty... have been opening with zoo because it just gives them a quick win it's a really good strategy in this type of uh conquest environment if he void tear is here then his void tear is just going to trade with the pilot of shutter anyway uh he's thinking the best way to do this it might be to uh void walker and void tear on both of them the other thing he do is sort of all in power overwhelming his own nerubian yeah and then void tear that would be for seven, seven. Eleven. Seven. Yeah, eleven seven. Or eleven eight. That's what he's gonna do. So he's yeah. Gonna power overwhelming taunt up. Is he gonna take the taunt as well? I don't think or he's no. gonna take the taunt as well. Now it's gonna be a twelve ten. No, I think he's gonna use the taunt to protect it. Surely, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> That's still a really big threat. Um, but <laughs> little does he know, the execute is in hand and. Whirlwind doesn't really do my oh, face. Oh, no. <clears throat> yeah, the Death Bite doesn't even need to uh, run, his, run his creatures in here. 
Takes 11 damage on the Acolyte. Gets another one as well. This Beautiful. is look, looking pretty bad for Tice at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, this this may well be a concede here. He just doesn't have... I mean, he has no cards. He went all in with everything he had left. That's the play that he had to make in that situation. Void color, dead draw. <laughs> you can hope for Malganus on the top for the next turn, but now he can be free to sort of... Uh, kill this this void caller knowing that nothing is uh, nothing substantial is going to pop out. Ooh, well, there's a frothing berserker, and that's that's, that's definitely lethal. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely lethal. Yep. Wow. Very well played by Forsen. I mean, there was a couple of turns earlier on that Dread Corsair turn being the biggest one, where he had a chance to play the Dread Corsair for free along with his Despite, but just holding on to that till a point where he knew he was going to have to protect some of his creatures. Um, just really solid play overall. And again, like you said, you can tell that he's played around with this deck quite a bit. And I really like his variation of it with the commanding shout. So super solid play. And he gets the win out of the way with the with the Grim Patient Warrior. Absolutely. So we have the Mech Shaman and the Freeze Mage for Forsen. And I think he'll probably go to the Mech Shaman. Give himself the most opportunities to win with the Freeze Mage. Yeah, the Freeze Mage is, again... Pretty much every single player that plays Freeze Mage has saved that deck for last. Just because it gives them the most opportunities to win. Uh, Freeze Mage is most likely going to counter at least one of the decks that, that his, their opponents are bringing. Um, so you, you know that you're going to be able to find a win somewhere. Tice is going to stick with the Zoo and try and get that. And Forsen's actually going to go to the Mage. Staying unpredictable. Completely like just flip-flopping his his lineup from the from the matches that he played earlier, playing them in completely different order. Exactly. So <laughs> he's going to play the Freeze Mage now against the Zoo, and this could be a very good matchup for the Freeze Mage if it draws well. I mean, that's pretty much the story of every Freeze Mage game, right? That kind of goes without saying. Freeze Mage can win pretty much any matchup apart from Warrior if it draws well. It's the closest deck to Solitaire that hurts. Apart from Mildred. Apart yeah. from Mildred. <laughs> Tides of time. Such a wise. Crazy. He's looking at this, rubbing his hands together. Yes, Forsen, come to me. Yeah, I'm not used to seeing tides. I said earlier, I'm not used to seeing tides with that, without his hair spiked up. Tice, you mean? Tice, yeah. No. I had so tides in my head. He's, he's confused too. Yeah, I'm not used to seeing Tice. Or, yeah, Tice without his, his hair spiked up like that. Yeah. So here we go, Fle Freeze Mage versus Zoo, and uh, Acolyte of Pain in the opening here for Force, and as you said, he does mulligan it though, and gets it straight back. So, uh, draw, freeze, burn, as TJ has said over and over again. Yep. That is the motto. It's the, they swear in on the Oath of Freeze Mage whenever some random guy, the, the Freeze Mage ambassador, comes to their house, swears them in. <laughs> well, just uh, putting on the Thalos here, mostly just to cycle it for card draw. Does have double Accolade of Pain in hand now. Interesting, we talked about this before, about the uh, the golden cards and the information you give your opponent. Forsen running one golden, one non-golden Accolade. I, it's, it's all about the min-maxing. I said it before, most of the time, especially in single series, it doesn't matter. Because you're... What you're doing is, if you play a golden card and a non-golden card in the same series, you're giving away to your, or different games in the same series, you're giving away to your opponent that you have two of that, two copies of that card, which 99.9% .9 of the time will not make a difference. Uh, but for that 0.1%, uh, the players that are, are really observant and can spot and love to min-max like that when they can rule out, rule in the possibility that you're running two of, of, of that given card, then it's pretty good. It doesn't come into play very often, though. But that's always been sort of a, a pet peeve of mine. If you're going to run a golden version of a card, you either run two golden versions or two non-golden versions. I mean, I just hate it because it makes your deck list really long. That's my problem with it. <laughs> Can't screenshot your deck list. Yeah, exactly. Who wants to scroll down on an imager link? Nobody. Nope. So, uh, Arcane Intellect here. Double Arcane Intellect in the hand for Forsen. So, he is getting that card draw. 
as you said, the draw is very important. But this is a pretty nice board here for Tice, and he just needs to keep building up this board, gets the Lotheb, and normally when you get, you have Lotheb on turn 5 as Zoo, you just play it because it's great on curve, but obviously, Freeze Mage. Or is he? He's just no, going to play it. I think he just played on curve anyway. A um, couple benefits. If the Freeze Mage has a lot of spells in their hand, um, if their hand is all spells, he's going to burn a card, because he's not going to be able to play anything. Literally nothing he can play this turn. None of his spells are, are able to be played on turn 5. Um, and the only thing he can play is Doomsayer. Well, he can play Doomsayer or Loot Order. He can play Acolyte as well. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think he wants to play Acolyte. Because if, if he plays Acolyte Doomsayer, that's okay. But if he plays Loot Order Doomsayer, or Loot Order Acolyte, he's just asking to get milled. Yeah. Because there's a Knife Dragon on board. You, you put three hits in the Acolyte of Pain, really risky. Doomsayer Loot Hoarder seems like the best best option here. Yeah, I think that's true. I think he has to play the Doomsayer. And maybe even Loot Hoarder. Yeah, just because um, he he values having that Doomsayer in combination with Freeze more than he values what would end up being virtually a seven-point heal. All right, well, let's see what uh, what he's going to draw here and then obviously what Tice is going to burn. If, if he, he just needs three juggles to face. And he has five juggles total. Yeah, no, it's lethal. Because there's only one health on the board. Yeah, that's lethal. Oh. Well, okay then. Yeah, guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. We weren't really paying attention there. We were busy counting the <clears throat> cards yeah. in the hand of Forsen. But Forsen gets a bit surprised there. Didn't have a nice block up. So it, it didn't really matter. Get win. Even if the knife juggler, one of the jugglers had hit the loot order, he only needed three. He had five total juggles, and he only needed three to hit phase. So he actually had a couple damage overkill, I think. Um, but that low at coming down right then, it secures your board for the next turn. And like like I said, it just... There's no spells that a mage can cast when you play low theb on curve. So it basically just negates an entire turn for them. And if you have a strong board, you, it 100% protects your board. So usually when you're playing Zoo, even against Freeze Mage, low up 100% on curve. Yeah, so Forsen's going to go with the Mage again. And uh, we're just waiting to find out what Tice is going to go for. If he goes to the Mage as well, well, that could be quite something. <laughs> it's basically who draws into Alexstrasza and then burn first. That's it. Well, Tice is going to go for Rogue, so we're not going to see that Mage Mirror Match yet. I don't think, I think they, uh, they want to play Mirror Match. No. Mage Mirror Match. I think if, uh, if Forsen loses this game, he'll definitely go to the Shaman. <laughs> Because the mirror match is just such a problem. Because mm -hmm. it's just so draw. I, I, I can't think of any mirror match, which we saw the face hunter earlier, but I don't think there's any mirror match which is more just completely dependent on the order in which you draw your cards than freeze match. That's very true. <laughs> I just don't think there's a mirror match which is more random. You usually end up just using Blizzard on an empty board to get a card out your hand. Yeah. Ugh. Or flame strike yeah. on an empty board. Flame strike on a loot hoarder is not a is not an uncommon play. Um, well, when you're watching freeze mage mirror. Well, we're not guaranteed to see freeze mage mirror yet. We are in fact going to see freeze mage versus Tice's rogue. Um, just getting the spectator mode set up here. Hearthstone is a little bit finicky sometimes, so let's get ourselves this wonderfully completely not buggy spectator mode that it's not as if it's been out for four and a half months or anything blizzard and you haven't fixed any of the blood any of the bugs just saying you gotta give them some credit spectator modes for other games take a really long time to come out and be polished so i'm grateful <laughs> i'm grateful this is true. For, what, for what we've been given i just i just wish they'd flip the hands tj i just wish they'd flip the hands yeah the technology just isn't there yet the hand flipping technology just isn't there yet. <laughs> I'd say we're getting into the game here. We're just uh, resetting Tice's perspective. You can see double ice block in the hand for Forsen is not necessarily great. What? That's how how big a handicap is the the double ice block in hand, TJ? Pretty huge. Uh, rogues can put you on a clock as a freeze mage. Um, it's not uncommon for oil rogues to just load up their weapons early and just start chipping away at your health total because the way that a rogue wins in this matchup is just pressure you just want to force the mage to play defensive nearly the entire game so um 
And going pilot instructor just seems obvious. Yeah. It's better, particularly when you've got two in hand, you need to play them at some point. So yeah. let's do that. Twins! Yeah, well, you can play Pilot and Shredder turn three, Pilot and Shredder turn four. That's that's pretty solid. Azure Drake on five. It's going well for you. Feels like a pretty good day. But then Freeze Mage. So yeah, Forza's just going to play the block here. And when you got those ice blocks in your hand, and like I was saying with the Pilot and Shredder, one of the really important things is just when do you are you going to have the mana to play them because you do need to react to what's going on as a freeze mage you need to set yourself up in the right way and you just need to play your cards and play your mana in in the right order so he needs to find time to get the first block in. getting the, when you've got the two in your hand playing the first as early as possible is good when you've got a relatively clear turn to do so i don't like that tice is holding back on his dagger without a weapon buff in his hand it makes me feel uncomfortable because he's missing these little points of damage turn after turn um, he's thinking that he's not going to have uh, enough mana to re-dagger up over the next couple turns. But at the same time, in, in the same line of thinking, if he thinks he's not going to have mana to dagger up, it means he's not going to have mana to use a weapon buff if he draws one. So um, one of the hardest parts about playing Rogue is knowing when to attack with an unbuffed dagger and the likelihood that you're going to draw into a weapon buff and the likelihood that you're going to get to use it the next turn. So... Yeah, I think you're right. It's... Well, <laughs> you see, this is why Tice is a pro player and you're not, DJ. Well, no, he still, knew... like no matter what, it wouldn't have affected his line of his line oh, of play. Because um, most, more than likely, he'd either play Azure Drake or Loth up here, depending on on what Forsen actually did. So I, I don't think, I don't know. It's, it's just something that I think about a lot when I play Oil Rogue. Um, one of the things I make sure I try and hit on the most is, uh, am I using my dagger? Am I maximizing the amount of damage I'm doing while minimizing the effect that I'm having on uh, like the timings of my weapon buffs by having to read dagger? So just something to think about a little bit. Now that he has both buffs in his hand, though, holding on is, I think, uh, the best choice. Well, the only other thing he could have done with his dagger there is he actually could have milled force in for one card. He could have uh, hit him, hit the acolyte once with the dagger and then back. Well, he can't backstab it because it's not undamaged, is it? Uh... Yeah. Sapcasters. He, he could have hit it with... Uh... Eight hours, guys. Eight hours. You try talking about Hearthstone games for eight hours and not making mistakes. You got enough... worst, worst mistake I ever made uh, when I was casting Insomnia because we had, we had both perspectives on two screens. And I was looking... I was kind of looking diagonally at the two screens and I kind of got confused on what the perspectives were and said that the priest should cabal shadow priest the death lord that was on his own side because I saw the card come in on the top on one screen and the death lord on the bottom on the other screen and said oh you could cabal shadow priest the death lord and that made me look really dumb yeah that was the best of us and <laughs> he's he's going to be able to pop the block here relatively easily and set up for lethal next turn so yeah this is pretty crazy this is what Oil Roll can do, it's just a huge amount of damage coming in. That's what, 19 damage. Uh, it doesn't even need the Blade Flurry. <laughs> the mighty, the, okay, the only thing that's saving Force in here is that the Ice Block it costs... Two mana. Two mana because of the Emperor Thor's hand. The only thing he's going to be able to play next turn is Ice Block. And then he's just going to die the, the turn after that anyway, so... I think Force in might just be dead. Yeah, Forsen might be in trouble here. Yeah, he's, he has to play the Ice Block. That's all he can play. He's gonna go face with Thorson, because cause why not? And I don't think there's any way out of this for Forsen. He pops the block this turn. He has no defensive measures for the following turn after that. He does have Ice Barrier. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be enough to keep him alive because any direct damage spell, just a Blade Flurry the following turn would be enough and it would play around the Ice Barrier. So, Yeah, I mean, he has uh, Blade Flurry Tinkers in his hand. So even if the entire board got cleared and he burns his weapon this turn, he can re-dagger Tinkers and Blade Flurry. Blade yeah, Flurry. just pop the block, kill the Emperor Thorsan, pass. That's all he has to do. It doesn't even need to fan of knives. It's a little bit overkill. <laughs> He, Maybe he's a little bit worried about Doomsayers coming off his Shredders. <laughs> yeah. It, even then, it doesn't even matter. All he has to do is avoid heal, 
and then Blade Flurry next turn. Yeah, I think you just you probably trade the Lothab. Oh yeah, wow! Trade the Lothab. No, t <laughs> it's funny. Force actually has Alex Straza for seven mana in the sand. Oh my! So in reality, he could actually Alex Straza and Ice Barrier, and that would save actually him? yeah it does save him. Yeah, and wait, how much damage does he have? Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Fireball. I think he has both Fireballs. Still doesn't have enough damage. I think he, the only thing he can do here is Alex Charles the Ice Bear to stay alive, I think. Yeah. I think it's 16, 20. Uh, yeah. It won't even keep him alive, no. Yeah, I was going to say, because he can Tinkers again. He can, he can Tinker back. Blade Flurry. He'd, he'd yeah. effectively, with uh, with Ice, Alex Charles' Ice Barrier, he'd effectively be at 23 health. And I think there's actually 25 potential damage just in the hand alone. I don't know if there's anything else he can draw into. He actually has quite a bit of damage um, in his hand. 12, 13. He's close to lethal. Yeah. Because of uh, the Emperor Thor's hand staying alive here a few turns. He's going to see that the only potential way for him to live is this, but he doesn't even go for it. No. He's actually going to burn his second fireball there. Yeah. Doomsayer. Yeah. Cross not going to throw a bunch of cards, but it's not going to be enough. Yeah. Tyce, all he has to do is Blade Flurry here. He's going to take the series. Or not the series, sorry. Just the match. Oh, yeah, he's gonna now. go up to two one. Ty still has to win with Mage, and we know how volatile mirror matchups can be. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it is going to be the that it is the Freeze Mage. We've seen a lot of Mages today. I think Muzzy was the only player running Mech Mage, uh, but it's possible that I might be mistaken. So, I think that's right. Okay. I did ask someone else, and they said I think he was playing Freeze Mage as well. So, I'll, we'll go with that. Ty's is playing Freeze Mage. I guess then Forsen has to go to the Shaman. Mm -hmm. I don't think, again, like you said, I don't think you can ever choose a Freeze Mage Mirror match. Yeah. So we are going into game number four, only possibly two games left today of this series. And it's uh, for our last semifinal, Tice versus Forsen for a place in the money, for a place in tomorrow's finals. We are going to have a third place match tomorrow as well, I believe. Yep, third place. Oh, match. wow. Forsen is going with the mage. <laughs> nice. Um, I mean, I guess he figures he's got to win it sometime. Yeah. Got to win at some point, so you might as well just try and take the, the win now. I pro might have a lot of confidence in this freeze mage. It really doesn't matter which order he plays the dex in, because he's got to find wins with both of them in order to win the series. And Tyson I just feel like it's a psychological mage. thing. I think it's a psychological thing more than anything. It could no, be. I would, I would go for the Shaman. Well, I mean, if you play a long, grueling match as Freeze Mage and you win, that's probably more, will tilt the player more than if you just win really quickly with a, with a Mech Shaman. So, but Mage versus Mage. I'm pretty sure it's Freeze Mage versus Freeze Mage. Whew. All right, so assuming this is Freeze Mage versus Freeze Mage, TJ... What are the important cards in this matchup, and what do they need to do to win? Spells. <laughs> Arcane <laughs> Intellect is big. It's basically just who can draw into Alex Straza first, and then who can kill kill the other player first. Ice Barrier is useless. <laughs> the winner will be the player who can kill the other one first. Thanks Both for the players insight, have about 15 useless cards in their decks. It seems silly, but that's exactly how it is. Yeah. Uh, the only thing you keep right now is card draw. That's the only thing you keep. You throw away everything except card draw. Yeah, because like Frost Nova, Blizzard, Doomsayer, Flame Strike. That's eight. Ice Barrier, ten. What else is useless? What? Blizzard, Flame Strike, Doomsayer? Yeah. Ice Barrier? Kona Cold? Frost, no Frost Nova, Kona Cold, there's another one. So yeah, like you say, there's ten to fifteen dead cards in this deck. Yeah, Which and right now, Tice's hand is considerably better. Yeah. Uh, Tice has 
two card draw mechanics in the Acolyte of Pain, and technically one with Blood Mage Thalnos. He also has the Emperor Thor's Hand, which is one of the most important cards in the matchup, just because it allows you to get out burst quicker. Um, Blood Mage Thalnos is, you're not going to really have, have find time to be able to use it for burst, and wow, Tice has, Tice <laughs> is, is way ahead of the, of the Freeze Mage curve right now. That's crazy. Three turns in, and you can already say he's pretty far ahead. Just in terms of what he's drawing. Yeah. I mean, I guess you can. It's going to go for Doomsayer here. Which I guess is good. You're trying to draw, deny the Accolade draws. And what better opportunity are you going to have for Doomsayer? Pretty much nothing. Yeah, that's true. Otherwise, he would be doing nothing. He could throw out the Blood Mage Thanos, but he'd basically be giving. Uh, Tice three draws from his Acolyte of Pain, which is not something that he wants to do. Yeah. So he's thinking about the Doomsday right here. I guess he might think about his own Thalnos. But there's just not really a lot of good plays here. He's going to... Okay, he's going to paint Tice's Thalnos just to stop any shenanigans. I don't know what shenanigans could possibly happen. I don't know. <laughs> who knows he's, he's just he, he doesn't know what shenanigans there could be but he's aware of them and it's just generally shenanigans he's, he's aware that shenanigans exist in the world exactly yeah so the doomsayer goes off this is and... yeah I you can just shows you by the opening hands alone you can already tell that this game is most likely going to go Tice's way um, he's already got nearly every piece that he needs. He can coin out his Emperor Thorsan here, um, which means that he's going to have Alex Draza a turn sooner. He's going to have Frostbolt costing one, Ice Lance costing zero, Pyroblast costing nine. So we can actually... on six? Yeah. Yeah, things like that. I don't even know if he needs to. Thorsan does have a burn in his hand, but he's going to have to use this on Emperor Thorsan just to make sure that he doesn't die. And you can see... <laughs> His face. I don't know. He just said something. Yeah, I don't. I, th he doesn't look that confident. I can't lip read, especially not lip read Swedish accents. So that hand at the top is very shiny. <laughs> the spell power makes everything glow bright. Seems to be shining a bit more than usual. I don't know. Maybe it's just the slight lagginess we have on our feet. Yeah, could, Spectator um, could have some issues with it as well. I'm going to see Flame Strike here, it looks like. Yeah. Again, Denial. denied the draws. Yeah, so much burn already. I, this game is all but done. <laughs> the one thing that Tice has to make sure he does is um, it's it's hard to gain to get exacties with with freeze mage when you're playing against another freeze mage against ice block you have to sort of stagger your spells in a way that you're putting him as low as possible when you when you pop his block for the first time so um he's he's got to sort of really plan ahead and make sure that he puts himself in the best possible situation a couple turns from now yeah definitely so he's looking at Antonidas here just Antonidas frostbolt get some fireballs and even ice lance as well yeah he, he there's a potential that he won't even need Alex Raza. <laughs> That's true. He's got so much burn in his hand right now, it's just ridiculous. He's got Power Blast plus double Fireball. He has 22 damage. And that's second Fireball for Forsen. Yeah. Going on Antonidas. That's, yeah, he's really far behind at this point. I'm going to use the two Fireballs. He doesn't have Antonidas in sight. This is really tough. Yep, Alex Raza is going to come down here. More than likely. He doesn't have a way to deal with it. He can't deal with the Alexstrasza. He can freeze it, but that's it. That Arcane Intellect is actually the first card draw mechanic besides Blood Mage Thanos that Forsen has drawn into the whole game. And uh, right now, it feels like it's too little too late. It, you can already tell he looks visibly frustrated at the fact that he just <laughs> cannot draw into... He can't draw into draw. Arcane Intellect is about, just about the only thing he can do, but... He, he he's gonna have to freeze the, the Alexstrasza just to try and prevent him from popping the block the following turn, 
And it doesn't even look like he's gonna even be able to do that. He's just sort of conceding over his ice block to Tice. I think he, I think he can. Fall, uh, no, yeah, because he doesn't get the reduction this turn. It doesn't come up till next turn. But I guess part of him thinks, oh, okay. I thought he was gonna leave the mad scientist alive to try and pull his second block. No. Uh, ice barrier basically negates the damage from the Alexstrasza, so that's what he has to do. All right, so how can he go about this? Can't pop a block this turn. Yeah. So he's gonna run the Alexstrasza in. I would get the power blast out of the way. I think so. Nine mana power blast. Uh, maybe not even. Maybe uh, fireball the Emperor Thorson. It's 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 uh, tough to tell. He wants to make sure that he can set up a guaranteed, um, a guaranteed popping of the block next turn. Block poppage. Yeah. Block poppage. Decisions. I like the pyroblast here, so but I can see I can see the benefit of killing the, the Thorson. He might hold off enough without I mean to pyroblast here. Does what? Well, one fireball plus Alexstrasza and ping. Or if he top decks Frostbolt, it'd be super lethal, but he's gonna go for the Pyroblast. Yep. Second Ice Block coming in for Forsen, so he's able to live another turn after the block gets popped. He's, Does he, he try for Antonidas here? I don't think there's anything that he can do that's gonna keep him in the game. Block's gonna get popped next turn, and the turn after that he's gonna get killed. So he basically has to try and kill Tice in two turns in order to win. So Archmage Antonidas seems like it's going to be the only way. He knows that there's at least two fireballs in Tice's hand if he yeah. was paying attention to the Antonidas play. So I don't I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. So going to get Ice Barrier and the Ice Lance here on the like Straza. He's dead. Yeah. Rip. Rip forcing boys. Sadly, it looks that way. The, bo the block can get popped here, though, with the fireball. If you're a fan of forcing, instead of looking at the game board right now, instead, you can gaze into... You can just look at the, the, the square around his webcam right now. And just look at the grass and look at the eggs. And just ima imagine Forsen just happy as ever, frolicking through the grass, picking up the He does seem like eggs. a frolicker. He'd enjoy a good frolic. Yeah. Because this is looking very grim. Of course Tice is gonna of course Tyke is Tice is going to take his time, but I just don't think there's any way that he's not gonna win this. Block is gonna be popped this turn. Uh, second block is gonna be put up the next turn. Um, but he also there's, has two blocks of his own. So. Yeah, I was going to say, there's two blocks in hand for Tice. The only thing Tice has to make sure that he does here is make sure that he his first block doesn't get popped this turn, and he's almost guaranteed a victory. Yeah, and there's no way he can pop the block. Yeah. So, second ice block. I'm just trying to see how, how Tice can actually finish this here, because it's just not actually that easy. I mean, he can fireball you and pop the block, but then how does he how does he kill him after he's fireballed him? That's true. Well, maybe he has to, you know, he has to, he has to make sure he can actually kill him. That's pretty important if you want to win the game. Yeah, that's true. And Forsen does have a lot of burn here, so does Tice actually? Kind of needs to draw a frostbolt here. It... <laughs> this actually, there's a possibility this could turn around if there is no burn left in Tice's deck. He does. He does have frostbolts left, right? In his deck, one frostbolt. One frostbolt, and he's used the one ice lunch, right? So oh, he's, he's, 
He yeah, he's actually I forgot that he actually used the Frostbolt and the Ice Lance. Um just to get those two extra fireballs. He's actually got one organic fireball, like one natural fireball left in his hand left in his deck as well. So there are opportunities, but uh, the way he sequenced his abilities early on actually opened up an opportunity for forcing to win. Um, it's going to be really tough because he's going to have to chain his burn over the next couple of turns. Um, he can actually pop the block. Hit, he can actually pop Tice's block next turn with Pyroblast and Fireball. So this is actually super... Pyroblast and Fireball in the same turn. That's insane. Yeah. So this is actually going to be really close he's he's gonna have to try and draw into everything he knows that his block is gonna be popped next turn so what he's gonna have to do is try and put out as much damage as he possibly can wow this tice was so far ahead in this matchup but actually the oh, amount man. of burn that forson has been able to get from that antonidas could well save him in this matchup i've ruled out that second block way too early tice actually m messed up some sequencing earlier on in the game by using his burn before alexstrasza and he might actually be running out of damage. It's a long day. That's why we're making these mistakes. And also because sap casters. Rank 25 casters. Freeze Mage doesn't work at rank 25. That's why we don't know about it. That's why we don't know what we're talking about. No one plays Freeze Mage at rank 25. They play a lot of Mage at rank 25. Basic Mage. Wolf Riders. Yeah. Gold Fist Ogre. Gold Chair Footman. Frost Wolf Grunt. But, I mean, there is still a couple spells that Tice can use to win the game. I mean, Forcing basically has no defenses left. Um, just any direct damage spells it ends the game. So he's, he's going to pop the block next turn. Tice is going to have two turns left to draw into some type of burn. He has um, he has one Frostbolt left. Uh, he has one Fireball left that didn't come from Archmage Antonidas. Um... That's Doom not Sinner. it. Not it. So he can ping his own... He has to ping his own loot hoarder here to give himself one extra card draw for the following turn. And he has to pop his ice block here. Um, use his own ice block here. Yeah. All right. It, Forsen could be in the exact same situation, though, because Forsen doesn't have any... So this is what I was talking about earlier, where... Um, but it's, it's Thorsen, though. It doesn't really matter. He, he's just going to freeze it over and over again. He's got Frost over Blizzard and Blizzard. Yeah. He can't use it to do direct damage. So next turn, in order to pop the block, Forsen's going to have to use Pyroblast. So he needs to draw into direct damage too, but he also has Arcane Intellect. So both of these players are basically going to be on burn spells to win the game. Oh my god. Yeah. This could come into a crazy crapshoot of draws here. He has to... Doomsayer and Frost over here in order to stay alive. Yeah. This is going to come down to the wire. We were counting Force and out just because of the draws early on, but that's not Burn Spell either. Arcane Intellect, we'll see what he draws. What damage right. spells does he have left? Blizzard's not going to do it. Frost is not going to do it for him. So he has the Pyroblast to pop the block. This is this could end up coming down to a ping war. Yeah, oh, he, man. He wants to... He... Yeah, so he pings here to get him down to three. And then he's going to Pyroblast. Oh, man. The worst <laughs> Pyroblast ever. If it comes down to a ping war, Forsen's got the edge because he's one damage ahead. A six mana Pyroblast turns out to be the worst Pyroblast that was, entirely, that was ever possible. And actually, Tyus can play Mad Scientist this turn. There is no Ice Barriers left. So he, he actually is on lethal next turn to win. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So Forsen's going to have one draw in order to win the game. Oh, no, no, that is Ice Barrier. That is Ice Barrier. Because he's already had a block. Yeah. Yeah. So. He's just going to Blizzard to get Oh, it. man. Can he draw direct damage? No, it's Oh, an but he gets another he shot. What, what direct damage spells does he still have left in his deck? I know he has very little cards. Alex Straza. That's big, though. He can... This... If he can Alex Straza himself back up to 15 health... Tice will not have enough damage. So Tice has to draw into direct damage this turn in order to win. It's Frostbolt or Bust for him right now. Frostbolt, Fireball, or Bust for him right now. Forcing realizes it as well. Tice is a little bit stressed. He realizes that he might have made some mistakes earlier on in the series. 
Wow. Man, what a crazy mirror match. I like, I, you know, you called this right at the start. That actually, the ma the freeze mage mirror, if Forsen can win this, it might actually put Tice on tilt a little bit and give Forsen just even a tiny edge going into the shaman match. Yeah. Man, I'm kicking myself now for uh, not criticizing the, um, the play earlier that Tice made where he threw away a lot of his burn before Alex Trossi even came out because it's so hard to sequence your damage in freeze mage versus freeze mage to a point where you can pop the block and have them be at a low enough health total to where you can reliably kill them the following turn. So Forsen's thinking here, what can he possibly do? He's a one mana blizzard. That Thorison was up forever. That's crazy. <laughs> he got five turns from that Thorison. I've never seen that before. Yeah. He's just gonna wait it out. Is he gonna rope him? I think he is. Looks like he is gonna rope him. There's nothing that he could be thinking about here because he knows that that mad scientist can't attack in because that is ice barrier. Do you kill it anyway? Do you throw a Blizzard Frost Nova Doomsayer? I, I don't know. Blizzard Frost Nova Frost Nova Doomsayer. Just yeah. play spells. The <laughs> you know, they don't mean anything. Just play them. Why not? If he kills it, he'd be playing around Kazan Mystic. <laughs> That's about the only thing. Um. Wow, this is intense. Really intense. Pretty sure there's not a Kazan Mystic in this this deck. Okay, I think something's wrong. <laughs> Cause that rope is not coming up. Yeah, are we are we lagging here? We might need to jump out of the spectator mode and jump back in, because the rope definitely should have appeared by now. Oh my god. Rope, where are you? All right, we're just <laughs> trying to see what the problem is here. It appears there is an issue, and uh, admins are trying to get a resolve, but that is a tease. All right, so we're having some sort of uh, game bug here. This would be pretty rough if Force and Disconnects. Oh, God. Because that would be... That'd be a win for Tice, right? I don't know how it works. It might it might be Yeah, I'm not it sure. Might be a regame. Oh. Okay, so it seems like this might be an issue on Forson's end. Let's see, we're trying to get it resolved. We're not sure what's going on. We can uh, we can only talk so much about a game screen that is not moving. Picnic. <laughs> Just on 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 the turn that decides the game. He ends turn here. Okay, yeah. so we're, the 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 client the thing is bugged and we've uh, okay you can see us now. <laughs> um, apparently the, the, we're gonna go to a rematch from that because it completely bugged out, which is a complete uh, letdown in the tension of that game. But we're going to go to a rematch, which I think that's the only fair way to do it since this game is just so finely balanced, it doesn't seem fair to call it either way. So uh, we're going to go to a rematch once we can get things back up. I hope uh, there isn't any permanent problems on Force and Zen, but it seems like these guys are going to go to a rematch. I can't see Ties agreeing to a free win over Force and like this. So we're going to go to a rematch uh, as soon as we can get that done. Just waiting on an update on getting the rematch set up. But it's going to be a, another Freeze Mage Mirror. And Tice is going to have an opportunity to maybe correct some of the miscalculation he made earlier in that match. I'm just flabbergasted. <clears throat> there, might be a, a there might be a little bit more of an issue than um, just one player being spectated. It looks like they're, they're both having trouble... Uh, connecting back onto the client. Their game board is actually stuck. The game was actually so intense that... 
This game is so intense and so tense. That the game just broke. The game the client just broke. Game. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm checking, I'm checking right now myself to see if it's actually a Hearthstone problem. Um, see if you can actually log. See if I can actually log in. I can't actually see anyone on my friends list playing. <laughs> so, I guess we can take this opportunity to tell you guys in this intense moment to type in exclamation mark packs if you're feeling like you want to win some packs. Uh, Kingwin is doing a, a raffle, a giveaway for 20 Hearthstone packs. If you uh, type in that command in the chat, it'll bring you to a link. Follow that link, follow the instructions, and you'll be entered in that raffle to win 20 packs. Uh, so make sure you keep them on. Of course, all of this is for charity as well. Um, that's why this whole event is being run is Kingwin for charity, these, the Easter edition. So we are, any donations will be donated completely to Child's Play Foundation, which is a foundation that buys games and game consoles for kids in hospitals, sick kids kids with long-term illnesses to make their their stay in hospital which is a, a gloomy place as it is uh, a little bit more cheerful and a little bit more fun so uh, you can see see on your screen sometimes um, when we're in the game the amount of funds raised uh, so far and I know we can we can make that go even further so in these intense times when we're waiting for the freeze mage versus freeze mage rematch you guys can head over there and check out the foundation and maybe make a donation all right. Well, as I say, we're working through these technical issues for you and see if we can bring you that rematch as soon as we can. It is going to be a rematch of game four, the Freeze Mage Mirror Match. While we have some time, let's talk a little bit about the KPL, obviously. The Kingwin Pro League, uh, the biggest league in Hearthstone, the biggest league Hearthstone has ever had, is well underway now. We've only got uh, three or four weeks left until the playoffs. It's up to, there are 20 of the world's best players, it's 19 now, uh, competing for $15,000 in the playoffs. It's uh, it's a huge tournament, and you can see right at the moment, Strife Crow is at top of the Alliance group, and Hyped is actually sitting on top of the Horde group. Though uh, Hyped and Life Coach are kind of the front runners in that group, with Strife Crow just narrowly ahead in the Alliance group, with a bunch of guys, Firebat, Savage, and Show, uh, hot on his heels. And the top three from each division will go through the playoffs. It's uh, it's very similar playoff style to the LCS, if you're familiar with that. That the top players go through the second round of the playoffs, and then the other two play to play those people and then there's a final um all right can, uh we are seeing some gameplay here so it looks like we are starting to get these problems resolved as i say we're uh gonna get these resolved for you as soon as possible kpl of course every tuesday and wednesday from this week 6 p.m cet casted by noxious and lothar so make sure you don't miss that and of course friday's kpl insight with myself and uh radslav nidrakola the editor-in-chief of grosser gamers and some very agitated dogs go past my window. Um, I don't know what that person is doing to them, but I, I think they should probably be stopped. Oh my uh, goodness. That is incredible. <laughs> I think it's I think it's settled down a little bit I there. Think it's, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. But yes, KPL Insight on Friday, 6.30 CET, bringing you highlights of all the games if you didn't manage to catch them all, interviews with the players, analysis, uh, recaps, all that good stuff. Uh, TJ, as a as a as a casual spectator of the KPL, um, how have you been enjoying the the league format? A, a lot. It, it gives you a, a consistent view of the meta. Basically, um, I'm a sucker for keeping up with current decks and keeping up with uh, like how the meta is evolving. And have, getting to watch pros play two, three times a week uh, is really nice. And there's always tournaments on weekends too. So uh, watching the KPL throughout the week is is definitely a way to uh, to keep up on what the pros are doing. So. Uh, I like to watch it, and I think those dogs were actually watching that Force and Tice match, and they're outraged. Yeah, they're, they, they they're caught, getting they, agitated. They, they caught up, and they realized that that Force and Verse Tice match ended up bugging out, and they, they couldn't watch it anymore. So, One dogs, of my favorite things about the KPL, I think that is really what makes it such a really great concept, is that the players play one play, uh, one match a week, and they they can bring different decks every week for each individual player. So they can prepare individual lineups, individual styles, individual deck lists uh, for particular opponents. And I remember talking to uh, RDU and Life Coach after they played for the first time. Obviously, teammates know each other really well. Uh, RDU mind gamed that uh, Life Coach loves handlock, so he thought, "Well, he's going to bring giants. I'm going to put double BGH in some of my decks and BGH and everything." He ran double BGH. It was the first time I've seen anyone do that in ages. And Life Coach mind gamed them right back by taking the Giants out of his Warlock deck and bringing Demon Lock instead. So it's the kind of crazy, 
mind games you can see. We talked about Fireband Show uh, earlier on with the countering of Show's Warrior deck. It really just it rewards analytical, thoughtful players. So uh, definitely check out the KPL if you've not already. As I say, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Uh, just wanting to find out what we're doing here. Are we going to... Not sure if we're going to take a quick break or that we're into the game here. It's uh, a little bit hectic. People running around trying to figure out what we're doing. But it looks like things are settling themselves down now. So we're going to take a quick five-minute break to get these players back in. But everything... Uh, the players have logged back in, so the problem has been resolved. We're just going to take a five minute break to collect ourselves and get everything back together. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back with game a rematch of game four of Tice versus Forsen. Welcome back to the Kingdom of Charity Easter Edition 2015. And uh, we have sorted everything out for going back into game number four of Tice versus Forsen, the Freeze Mage Mirror match. Uh, <sighs> Just sat down again after the break. Thank you for uh, waiting for me to get into my chair before starting the countdown. That was great. Uh, <sighs> TJ, what happened? Uh, what they're remaking. Um, it looks like they're having some server issues, so we might be um, moving over to a different server. Uh, we'll have to see how, what these guys are going to be able to do. They're trying to uh, move over and create decks right now, I think, uh, so we can quickly move into that match. But... Uh, right now, Tice is up two to one in the series. Um, there was a little bit of a of a of a server issue in the last game, which didn't allow the players to play their last couple of turns. So the game was so close; no player had an overwhelming advantage. It was basically yeah. down to the last couple top decks. So um, it was decided that there that there would be um, okay that there would be a remake. So what we're doing is, I just say, uh, the European Hearthstone server appears to have died. Um, as I say, I can't currently log into Hearthstone myself, so and nobody on my friends list is in Hearthstone, so that pretty much tells you it's a server-wide issue, which means uh, specifically because it's a you know because it's a double disconnect as well. Well, it's not going to be in every favor of one player, and both players have agreed to a regame. As you say, they were literally both top decking for the win, so you can't call it either way at that point. Um, so we're going to do that as quickly as possible, and. As I say, they were going to be playing on uh, a different server, so they just need to make their decks on that server because they've made their decks on the Europe server, of course. I'm telling you this, you probably know what I'm talking about, but just explaining what's happening. So we're getting into this game here, and we just watched this whole Freeze Mage Mirror. Um, it's kind of interesting because it means we're able to see kind of the analysis and the commentary. A couple of players are saying on Twitter that um, Tice could have popped the Ice Barrier with Alex Firebolt face and uh, used Blizzard to freeze the board. And Forsen couldn't have popped Tice's block and killed the Alexstrasza at the same time. Yeah, there, there was actually a couple of plays that he made that um, were probably subpar. Uh, also, the play where uh, he used Archmage Antonitis and then used some of his burn. Uh, he traded his Frostbolt and Ice Lance in order to get two Fireballs before he actually used the Alexstrasza. So it ended up being he didn't have enough burn in the end. What he could have done that turn as well was um, during the Archimage Antonidas turn, I think he could have just traded it for one fireball. And then later in the game, he would have had the damage to spread out a little bit more so that he could have uh, had the burn to be able to finish him off. But um, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to, to predict that far into the future. I mean, even us, we were writing that off as a victory for Tice just because he had so much burn in his hand that it, it, it seemed like he was going to win no matter what. Um, Forsen got an Archimage Tinnitus that was left on the board for very many turns. So uh, this is a completely different game. And this time around, um, both hands are actually pretty even. Both players have a decent amount of card draw. Uh, both um, Tice does have the, the Emperor Thoris on, uh, but this is a lot cleaner of a start for both players. Yeah, this is a pretty good start. They both have a loot hoarder, uh, double loot hoarder for Tice. Loot Hoarder and Thalnos, uh, and the the Acolyte of Pain as well for Forsen. So both of card draw, Arcane Intellect off the top for Tice, pretty perfect. He's drawing into what he needs to kind of freeze in the mid game, but uh, I mean, like we talked about at the start, let's kind of let's rewind here a little bit and reset to where we were at the start of this game a minute ago. In the uh, in this map, this mirror match, there were kind of ten to fifteen cards that are completely dead, pretty much. Um, apart from some very specific situations. Cards like Blizzard, Frost Nova, Doomsayer, Ice Barrier, Cone of Cold, 
they're pretty pretty useless here it's kind of a, or inconsequential i guess would be the better way to use it yeah it's very true so it basically comes down to who can draw into their threats and they're burned first and, and uh, use their burn appropriately and use their burn appropriately the yeah, yeah. you want to make sure that you're getting as close your opponent as close to zero or one as possible when you're popping the ice block because you could put yourself in a situation where you only have large damage spells and you've popped the block while your opponent is too high of health. And then it makes it so you're having to ping constantly turn after turn after turn in order to go, to go for a victory. Yeah, exactly. The, the pinging, a ping war, that's never a good place to be for anyone. So double mad scientist for Tice here. He's gonna get those secrets out early and uh, was something I said as well in the first matchup, finding the finding the yeah, I'm just I'm basically just gonna repeat everything I said like 50 minutes ago. Deja um, finding the time to play your first ice block is pretty important, mm. um, and then find having the ability to play your second ice block when you want to, either from a mad scientist or from your hand, uh, is pretty important as well. So being able to manipulate the turns at which you're able to play your ice blocks is another key part of this matchup. So. Negotiating the ice blocks and the burn and defending against your opponent's burn with your own ice blocks. That's basically how you win win or lose this game. Yep. TJ's just so tired. He's seen it, he's seen this all before. Yeah. This is like exactly like his last game. When you when you cast Hearthstone and when you play a lot of Hearthstone and your 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 brain is constantly thinking about it. And so your subconscious is constantly thinking about it. So when your subconscious is constantly thinking about a certain subject, you dream about it a lot. So, like right now, the dreams of of my my Hearthstone themed dreams are actually playing through my head. I actually told about one a couple weeks ago, um, where um, I was actually in my dream I was Doctor Boom. Okay, like I was dressed as Doctor Boom. I was full on cosplay as Doctor Boom. On my left was Strife Crow, dressed as the left boom bot and on my right was life coach dressed as the right boom bot okay and we were like running through this field full of like sunflowers and like a really pretty field okay and in the sky was you know the show teletubbies yes do you know the baby the baby in the sun the teletubbies you know it's a little bit the sun rises and there's a little baby that giggles well yeah. the sun was rising okay over this field as I was dressed as Dr. Boom with Stripe Crow and Life Coach beside me. And instead of a baby laughing as the sun was coming up, it was Ben Brode's face on the sun and Ben's <laughs> Brode laugh. And like, we, the whole dream was just running through this field as the sun was rising with Ben Brode just laughing was over it, us. This was a separate to the boy band dream. Oh yeah, no, the boy band dream was, was last night because of I watched the... Um, the, the new Backstreet Boys uh, documentary based off their 20 year anniversary tour called Show Em What You're Made Of. Is, is Backstreet back? All right. All right. <laughs> you, you can't you can't put any Backstreet Boys opportunities past me. But back to the game at hand. We're pretty much in the same spot as we were before I started my ramble about my dream. Um, this is the thing is, I mean, there's not really a lot to say about them jockeying for position. They're just... Yeah. Trying to set themselves up and the yeah. Doomsayer comes down. He's going to put the Thanos down to, to draw a card off the Doomsayer. Doomsayer is a pretty dead card. There's not really great opportunities to use it here. Uh, Forsen does have Antonidas in hand with the coin, which could be pretty important to create some burn. Eventually it's going to come down to both players waiting on their Alex Straza. So what they're doing is just throwing AOE spells out onto an empty board. Like right now. Um, or uh, like you could use a frost nova just for the heck of it. Uh, you you want to sort of say yeah. See, you want to hold on to those at least one or two, just to sort of block like the hits from Alex Straza or Archmage Antonidas later in the game. But you really don't want a full hand, and he doesn't want to burn a card. So if both of these get get killed this turn, he'll be left with nine cards. He doesn't want to risk giving yeah. a full hand. Exactly. We did see the Thorison, especially for Forsen, stay on the board. The Thora Forsen, let's go with that, uh, stayed on the board for a really long time to the point where he had a one mana Blizzard and a six mana Pyroblast. Yeah. So, as, as you know, these games where the, 
the board doesn't really fill up and there isn't a lot of threats on the board, it's uh, it can get pretty crazy with Thorison. So Tice is looking to play his Thorison here pretty early. Yep. And he's going to try and protect it um, by pinging off this uh, loot hoarder. And having to throw Burn in Emperor Thor's hand actually is a pretty big deal. Uh, the one thing, he's not reducing the cost of Alexstrasza, but at this point it doesn't really matter. Because he's going to be on turn 10 really quickly anyway. But there's so many cards in his hand that are so um, important that he can weave in now that they cost less. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the most practical use of Blizzard that you're ever going to find. Yeah. So... Uh, he might even be thinking about Archimedes and Tinnitus, and then coin Frostbolt and trading in the um, the Blood Mage. If he does that, though, he's actually going to burn a card because he'll turn his coin into a Fireball. Uh, he'll turn his Frostbolt into a Fireball. He'll and get draw a card. And draw a card from Blood Mage Thanos. So, oh no, no, he's playing Archimedes. Okay, no, he'll be fine. He'll be at ten cards total once everything is said and done. Like, once he draws his card next turn, he'll be at 10 cards. Yep. So that's three fireballs in the hand for Forsen right now. And there's Alex. Wow. Right on time. Yeah. And, and now uh, he has an Archimedes Tenais on the board that's not being dealt with. Yeah, it's going to need fireball ping if he's going to deal with it. But again, using up that burn, and we see only one fireball in the hand for Tice. No Antonidas yet, no Alex Straza. Actually, it feels like Forsen's in a pretty good position here. It's like backwards from last game. But in last game, Forsen actually came back and had a chance to win because of um, inefficient use of burn from Tice. It could be the same situation in this game. He's going to have to Blizzard and Ice Lance ping just to clear this off. Wow. Yeah, so he's going to use the, the, the Fireball ping. Doomsayer as, as kind of Alex Straza protection. But Forsen's not going to care. He's got so much burn in his hand. <laughs> oh, jeez. Actually, this is quite unfortunate because it's just kind of the problem that we talked about with weaving the burn in between the ice blocks is what he really needs here is a frostbolt. And there's the second ice block. Okay, so how is he going to do this? Um, he has to Pyroblast this turn. Next um, turn. Next, Yeah, that's what I meant. He has to Pyroblast next turn. It'll get him down to five. He can fire. He can Fireball and pop the block the following mm -hmm. turn. And then he might want to start pinging him down. He'll ping and then Fireball the next turn. Then ping and Fireball the following turn after that. Um, he actually has enough damage to pop, pop both blocks and have a Fireball left over uh, to use his burn later on in the game. But it's hard to tell until everything plays out. It's hard to think that many turns ahead. Because what if Tice ends up using uh, Alex Straza defensively on himself after Forsen has used all his burn? It's, it kind of feels like the person who goes first, who uses their burn first, actually is at a disadvantage. Yeah, but it's but equally, really hard to predict. Yeah, equally you don't know what your opponent's got. So if you've got, his, if you've got your burn and he doesn't, yeah, this is really difficult, so... This is the exact position that Tice was in last game. He used his Archmage Antonidas, traded some of his spells for Fireballs, and put his opponent at 15 health. Crazy. So, so what does he do here? Does he go just go with the Pyroblast? I think he just go with the Pyroblast. Yeah, you're never going to find a more ample opportunity to use Pyroblast. A 10 mana? And the problem Forsen found himself in last, last game was that he ended up having to use the Pyroblast to pop the block. And that oh. was really inefficient. No, no, I actually like this play better, because it puts him lower. Um, he can actually get him to nearly one health before he pops the block. And he has Fireball for, he has fireball and Pyroblast, so he can yeah. weave through the blocks. Yeah. Uh, this actually should be game for Forsen, unless Alex Straza comes up. So it's all about the Alex Straza here, right? Yeah. Tyson needs to draw Alexstrasza and use it defensively. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. From Forsen having battled all the way back to a top deck war in the last game, he's actually managed to take the initiative here and, and could well bring it back to 2-2. And that's going to be a tough pill for Tyson to swallow after being so far ahead, losing that game to a disconnect, and now just not having the same, start, the same good start in this game. He's having to count his cards carefully, make sure he doesn't... 
burn anything. Needs to play Ice Block. Antonidas is a bit late. He's going to have one more draw to draw into a defensive Alexstrasza. Yeah, because he can't even uh, proc his Acolyte to draw a second card. He might even Frostbolt his own Acolyte. Yeah, he's thinking about that. Uh, he can do that as an emergency next turn if he doesn't draw into it, because his Frostbolt does cost one mana. <laughs> uh, but that's going to be really his only opportunity to make something happen. Because Forsen does have two damage abilities in his hand. He can pop the block the next turn. And then still have lots of direct damage available to be able to finish him off the turn after that. He's actually going to do it now. He's going to go Frostbolt. Oh, he's no. just going to Frostbolt face. Frostbolt Ice Lance. Yeah. Okay, so he's he's playing a little bit aggressive. Uh, I don't think... Even now, even if he defensive Alex Strauss himself, Forsen still has enough damage to be able to push through. So it, it it feels like ping fireball is going to be the the way to pop the block here. Oh geez, super close though. And last time we counted forcing out, we uh, what's the saying? Counted our chickens before they hatched. We did indeed count our chickens, or we yeah. count, we in fact counted Tice's chickens for him. It's it's such. I never really understood that saying. Well, I understood it, but. Like the actual, like where it came from. It's a very grim saying. You count your yeah. chickens before they hatch. Yeah, it means some of your chickens are gonna die. What well, means that some of your eggs are not necessarily chickens. That's still really grim. <laughs> it's, it's... I mean, some of those little baby chicks are gonna die before they even become chickens. Yeah. Anyway, TJ, let's. <laughs> Let's concentrate on the uh, final it, turns of this crucial matchup here. If I was a good farmer, I would count my chickens before they hatch, so I could make accurate reads on how much money I would make. It's all about the accurate reads. So, I, so, I understand the saying, but... So, I'm, Forsen's going to pop the second block here. I don't support it. Okay. Just so you know, Callum. Yeah, I, I know just you, so I know. I know you keep trying to change the subject, but... <laughs> this is a subject that I'm really passionate about. <laughs> Tice? What's Tice gonna do here? I mean, he can he can draw cards off this mad scientist. Um, oh, and there's the Alex. Wow. Okay. I don't... still don't think it's enough. He has to Alex draws it this turn and be able to survive two more. The only thing is that Forza makes a really big mistake by attacking into the ice barrier. I think that's the only way he can actually yeah. lose. Playing this Mad Scientist was... I don't know why he played the Mad Scientist no, with the Acolytes out. I guess he knew that he won no matter what. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I, I think but that, go back, that goes back to counting chickens. I think that was a little bit questionable, but giving him the opportunity to draw cards, because obviously he wouldn't have drawn the Alex Straza otherwise. See, Forsen would actually be a great farmer, because he would have an accurate count of his chickens before they hatched. I don't He's know if ahead. a farmer. Yeah, they, I think that is going to be game. I don't, I don't see any way out of this. Sadly, no. Oh, he can, he can play Doomsayer, then he can play Blizzard, then Frost Nova, and then he can concede. <laughs> and then he could concede. Yeah, so the barrier is up for Tice. The block has been popped. There's a fireball in hand for Forsen. Just, there's nothing he can do here. Nope. Unless he's able to control Tice for it and control Tice's mad scientist somehow and then hit his own face to hit yep. the ice barrier. But Yep. <laughs> he's gonna antony this here, but Oh my god. That's not gonna make a difference. Well, after what amounts to more than an hour of Freeze Mage <laughs> oh my versus god. Freeze Mage. We saw almost one really? full Freeze Mage versus Free Mage. Bugged out, we saw a second Freeze Mage versus Freeze Mage. Yeah, 50 minutes it took for us to complete that game. Yeah, so that finally is going to end. And that's not even the end of the series, because Forsen ties it up 2-2. Two to two. The last match is going to be Tice's Freeze Mage versus Forsen's Mech Shaman. I'm so tired. We're, we're nearly 10 hours in. <laughs> that's, yeah. 
We've That's... been casting this the King one for Charity Easter Edition 2015 for 10 hours today. Yeah, if you want to donate to a nice retirement home for us to go to once we've done this, because we're I think we're spent. Uh, I'm gonna have to go do something else. This is just been insane. Yeah, and um, make sure you guys uh, tap in exclamation mark packs. We are doing a raffle giveaway, of course. Uh, it'll bring up a. Um, a link in chat. Head to that link. Follow, follow the instructions. And you can win twenty packs. packs. Twenty packs, yeah. And of course, all this is for charity. So make sure uh, you check out the links below. Um, Child's Play Foundation is a foundation that, of course, uh, gives uh, consoles and games to children that are um, in hospitals that have that are sick, that have long-term illnesses, uh, and it makes their their days in a hospital, which is a, a gloomy place, uh, just a little bit just a little bit better. So go yeah. ahead and donate to that. Every look, every little dollar is appreciated, and that's why we're we're all here. So this is the last match <laughs> of the quarterfinals. And 100% of the donations do go to Child's Play. Kingwin doesn't take anything off the top, just uh, so you're aware of that. But hopefully this will be a little bit of a quicker match. It's going to be the Mech Shaman of Forsen against the Freeze Mage of Tice for the semifinal. And the winner of this will meet Tides tomorrow in our second best of seven semi-final we're going to be starting at 4 30 cet tomorrow so make sure you join us once for to see the the winners of all these matches but uh it's going to be a, probably a coined whirling zapomatic for force and just to get the damage in early whirling zapomatic um interesting fact i don't know if you knew this tj that uh the whirling zapomatic is a jedi yeah he's got little light little things but the golden zapomatic is a is a Sith. Did not know that. Because the lightsabers go red. Wow. Today I learned fun facts. Hearthstone, Hearthstone facts with Cal and Leslie. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. I don't know why the ch the lightsabers change color in the golden version, but it is true. It's green lightsabers in the normal version and red in the golden version. So that was a fact that Nimsh taught me. Nimsh Good old is, Nimsh. Nimsh is a very wise man. Very wise and sort of old man. Um, throws out the Doomsayer uh, just to match up against the Whirling Zapomatic, and he actually doesn't have a way to deal with it, so he's going to be able to clear it. That thing represents so much damage that you can't really afford to leave it on board for a couple turns. Oof. Double Frost Nova as well. Uh, that's not too bad. Doomsayer, so, not so too much bad. clear. Yeah. The one thing he needs is a little bit more card draw. He draws in that second Arcan Intellect, draws into that Accolade of Pain. Uh, he's actually got a pretty good shot. Um, Mech Shaman does have quite a bit of burst from hand. It's a very similar matchup to Mech Mage. Uh, the one thing is that uh, Mech Shaman. Oh baby! There it is. Fell Reaver. Okay, so this is Fell Reaver Shaman. We didn't see it in the first match. So we didn't know whether or not it was, but this is Fell Reaver Shaman. Fell Reaver um, Shaman is basically a death sentence <laughs> in Freeze Mage. Because what they'll do is they'll just constantly freeze it over and over and over again. And by the time you know it, you're out of cards. Uh, the one thing that he has going for him here is that he does have a low that fall at the next turn, which is going to block out some of the damage. But the thing is, as long as Tice does not use ice lance here yeah that's just he what could I was frost say. over this turn still be able to ice lance the <laughs> the, the um the fell reaver the following turn and from there it's basically going to be frozen every single turn because he has frost over after that he has a frost bolt uh after that so forsen could be in trouble from playing this this uh this fell reaver he might not have a deck lit and i don't think the cards in his hand are going to be enough for him to win the game yeah i i'm not sure about playing the fell reaver I'm I'm really not I'm not a fan of it. I think it's uh, the deck is is so inconsistent. It can just either you can either blow it win with it or you can get completely blown out and lose with it. I think and in as you say in this matchup, I think the Fell Reaver is just too much of a liability. Yeah. I don't I honestly wouldn't play it. If it I think you know you have this deck. I think you can play the deck perfectly oh, fine and have a good no. chance to win. Don't play Doomhammer. No. 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 Okay. Well, Forsen could kiss goodbye his his entire deck. Oh, this is this is really bad. <laughs> yeah. On a second ice lance. This is. Oh. All right. Well, <clears throat> to be honest, 
I wouldn't even keep it. I would keep it alive. Yeah, I think so too. I think Tice is actually doing Force in a favor here. Oh, there's a second Fell Reaver. Force was not happy with the second Fell Reaver getting burnt. Wait, was that not happy? I, I was that I, happy? <laughs> that's true. I can't tell. Yeah. I mean, he thought playing the first one was a good idea, so maybe he's upset uh, he lost the second one. He discarded a Rockbiter, I believe, which was one thing yeah, that that's... I think he, he might have been a little bit upset about. Uh, the Rockbiter combined with the Doomhammer is actually a good way to put on a, quite a bit of burst. And the Whirling Zapomatic as well. It's uh, Rockbiter is a pretty crucial card in the, the Mech Shaman. Yeah, and since he already played the Doomsayer, I don't think there's a point in actually Ice Lancing the... He's going to do it, though. He's going to Ice Lance face. I guess that's that's actually pretty good. Another Rockbiter gone. Mech Yeti, a Neutron. All right. How many... Uh, so he, he used... He burned, what, 12 cards total? Yeah. It's 12 or 15. Ice Lance, Frost Nova, Doomsayer, Frost Nova. Yeah, 12 cards. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah, a lot of it was burned as well, so... And no damage from the Fell Reaver. Yeah. It could have been a lot worse. And to be honest, I would have kept that thing alive for longer. Um, yeah, probably would have given it one more turn at least. Yeah, because he actually had Flame Strike this turn. So what he could have done was actually freeze them, Ice Lance the uh, Fell Reaver to put it at four, and the following turn Flame Strike. So then he would have uh, forced him to uh, discard uh, more cards. Um, he could be in trouble though. There's still a lot of burn left in this in this in this mech in this mech shaman. Ooh, Blizzard. Another freeze. Now that, to be fair, that is one good thing about the Fell Reaver here. It has eaten a lot of the freeze. Yeah. Okay. B the thing is, Tice has not drawn into any of his secrets or mad scientists. No ice barrier, no uh, ice block, and there's a lot of damage um, in the hand of Forcer right now. He's he's doing consistent damage with the Doom Hammer every turn. These boom bots represent quite a bit of damage on the board. Um, He's going to be able to play Lothab this turn to lock him out of basically doing anything. He can build up a strong board Lothab and set up lethal the following turn. Yeah. Yeah, this Force is not out of this yet. It's certainly, as you say, a lot of burst. Does have the Power Mace as well to follow up this Doomhammer. That actually may lock him out of the game. Yeah, the Lothab now actually, I mean, obviously we said, you know, the Lothab would have been a good play earlier. Yeah. I think that's game. Um, he's got 10 damage showing on board, 4 damage plus, plus the Doom Hammer, and Crackle. That's it. He can With Frostbolt Face. Frostbolting Face, or, yeah. Frostbolting Face or Frostbolting the Lotheb is the only way for him to to survive an extra turn. And even yeah. then, How it's does he possible win? that the, the Crackle rolls high. 7, 8, 9. If Crackle rolls for 6... Plus fire elemental, yeah, that's game. There's no way. Yeah, so he's gonna such gonna ice. Yeah, he's gonna ice lines. I think that's it. Fire elemental plus crackle. That's at least six damage, with 15 damage shown on the board. Yeah, that's it. Well, wow, Forsen is gonna win this three to two over Tice. Forsen is gonna go to our semifinals, and he's gonna play Tides of Time tomorrow. Oh my goodness! Absolutely insane. What a what a grueling final series. Yeah, that's going to be it. The Crackle's going to come down. Doesn't even need to roll high. Can roll as low as he likes. And in fact, it rolls for six. So... As you can wow. see, when we uh, get back to the cast review, things have gone a little bit rough for us. It's honestly been quite a, a mental exercise for TJ and myself. It's... Left me a little bit broken. It's been a super long day. Yeah, uh, I'm sure Forces fans, Forces fans everywhere, all across the world, are rejoicing right now, uh, cheering on their their Lord and Savior. Forces is moving on to the semifinals tomorrow, and uh, it's uh, he's going to fa be facing Tides of Time. So that's going to be a, a really great match. Um, everything's best of seven tomorrow as well. So the yep. competition is going to get even fiercer. We had nearly 10 hours of competition today. We did eight best of fives, and even one of them was <laughs> technically six matches just because yeah, of, it was the best of six. we played through almost two full freeze ma mage matches. But uh, I had a lot of fun today, even though it was long, even though it was tiring. 
it, it was really exciting. Yep. As I said before the match, do make sure you make a donation to the Child's Play as well. Show your appreciation. Show Also, let us know that you, know, you want us to do more Kingwin for charity tournaments, so do that. Make sure you enter the raffle as well. And we're going to be back here at 4.30 CET, which I believe is 11.30 Eastern and 8.30 Pacific. Something like that. Sure, let's do that. I'll take your word for it. We're going to start with our two semi-finals. We're going to start with Jab versus Chalky. And then we're going to have Tides of Time versus Forsen in a best of seven. And then I believe we will have the losers match, the third place match. Uh, and then we'll have our best of seven grand final. For And all these four players are going to take home a share of $5,000. Uh, they've all won, guaranteed themselves $500 by making it to the semifinals. One person is going to end up with $2,500. So TJ and myself, we're going to be back here tomorrow at 4.30 CT. Make sure you join us for the final day of the Kingdom for Charity. Easter edition 2015. We will see you then. Thank you very much for watching.